2023 has been a bad year for Walgreens. The viral news of theft and store closures is just the start. The stock is down over 43% year to date. This only adds to the decade long bear market for WBA stock. Overall, the price is now down 78% from its 2015 high. As if it couldn't get any worse, the company's board just asked CEO Roz Brewer to step down. This was a surprise for many following the stock as she only joined the company in 2021. It now leaves Walgreens future even more uncertain. The only thing that stayed positive and growing at Walgreens is its dividend payment. The company has 47 years of consecutive annual dividend increases. However, this growth is slowing dramatically. Last year's increase was only 0.42%. On top of this, Walgreens free cash flow has dropped to negative three of the last four quarters. With the recent price drops, WBA stock now has a dividend yield of 9.3%. That may seem like a good value for dividend income investors, but it may be a value trap. The risk of a dividend cut is a real possibility. In today's video, I'm going to provide an updated analysis of Walgreens stock and explain whether or not I think Walgreens will cut their dividend payment. My name is Zach, this is Dividend Data, and you should leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. Throughout, I'll be using the stock research tool I personally developed, which is available at DividendData.com. Here you can do deep analysis on over 7,500 stocks helping you find better investments. Most importantly, you can avoid poor or risky investments like I will discuss today. There is a 14-day free trial, so feel free to sign up and follow along. Walgreens Boots Alliance, ticker symbol WBA, has a current stock price of $20.65 with 863 million shares outstanding, giving it a market cap of $17.8 billion. The company is primarily a pharmaceutical retailer, which owns the brands Walgreens and boots. On top of this, they own the number seven beauty company and are expanding into healthcare. We will talk more about that healthcare business later. As of 2023, virtually all their operating cash flow is from the retail operations. That business is not doing well. The pandemic related surge in store traffic from vaccines and testing is practically gone. The problem of theft is rampant in many store locations, so much so they are forced to lock up most of the merchandise requiring employee assistance, which will obviously reduce sales. Also, the threat of competition is getting larger by the day. It is very difficult to differentiate in pharmacy. Much of the services are being replicated by larger grocery chains, Costco, Sam's Club, Amazon, etc. The company is closing 150 U.S. Walgreens locations and 300 Boots UK locations. This is in an attempt to cost cut by closing poor performing stores. So how bad is this impacting their financials? Pretty bad. As I mentioned earlier, three of the last four quarters have had negative free cash flow. In total, free cash flow is negative $821 million in that time. Operating cash flow is down massively year over year. The latest quarter had negative $20 million in operating cash flow. This is a disaster. On top of this, they are spending more than ever on capital expenditures to grow this new healthcare investment, which is unprofitable. Q3 capital expenditure was $525 million. They are facing both an income problem and a spending problem. For fiscal 2023, free cash flow per share will not only be negative, but likely be the largest loss in over 30 years. So it's not going well and only seems to be trending worse. For context, the WBA stock dividend payment is $415 million every single quarter. Obviously, they cannot afford this unless the company gets turned around quickly. The WBA dividend was once considered very safe. In 2021, the dividend payout ratio based on free cash flow was 38%. It has been in this 20 to 40% range for much of the past decade. However, 2022 was the start of a bad trend with a 76% free cash flow payout ratio. As I mentioned earlier, this has only gotten worse and worse. The 2023 dividend payout ratio will be outrageously unsustainable. This is not a cash rich company that can just take these losses either. As of Q3, the company only has $970 million in cash on hand. It is also loaded up with $36.4 billion of total debt, putting net debt at $35.46 billion. If Q4 is a repeat of Q3, then they are in a horrible situation. They will be forced to get more debt at unfavorable rates in order to keep paying the dividend and meeting their planned capital expenditures. Over multiple quarters, this could get very ugly. The company has already started taking drastic actions. The board basically fired the CEO even though they said it was mutual, 
Then they sold off some of their stake in Amerisource Bergen for $1.85 billion. This gives them a little more wiggle room for a few more quarters. The company still owns about 16% of the publicly traded drug distributor. It's valued at $8.17 billion, meaning Walgreens still has about $1.3 billion of potential value here. Unless operating cash flow improves, the company will be forced to continue selling assets. As I mentioned earlier, Walgreens is spending more than ever. This is as they invest in their healthcare business segment, which they view as their long-term growth driver. This includes investments in Village MD, Shields Health Solutions, and CareCentrix. It expands Walgreens' capabilities in primary care, specialty pharmacy care, and post-acute care. From a strategic standpoint, all of this is very important. It helps build a competitive advantage around their pharmacy retail business by expanding their healthcare relationship with customers. However, this segment is unprofitable with no timetable on a path to profitability. They are also spending more building out these locations at the same time their operating cash flow is crashing down. Walgreens management has some tough choices to make. They can cut the dividend payment and invest in this healthcare growth strategy, or they can keep the dividend, sell off assets, cut as much expenses as possible, and slow down the healthcare strategy. They may even abandon that healthcare business outright. So what do I think is going to happen? Personally, I have my expectations set that there will be a dividend cut. However, I'm not 100% sure. The firing of Ross Brewer may signal a large shift in strategy. Much of the healthcare growth initiative was spearheaded by her. Also, the 47 years of consecutive dividend growth is a massive streak. Some boards have a lot of pride in this and may choose a dividend cut as the last resort. Now, some of you may remember that I used to own Walgreens stock. I bought in 2021 and proved to be dead wrong about my investment case. Ultimately, I sold in fall 2022 at a loss and put much of that money into Microsoft stock. There is nothing wrong with selling, taking your losses, and reinvesting elsewhere. However, if you're holding out hope, Walgreens is definitely not dead. The company's value has fallen so much that it could be a value play. Keep in mind, though, that there is a large risk of dividend cut and and it may take many years for the company's earnings power to improve. This will be a long turnaround. If you want to use the research tool that I've been showing throughout the video, then sign up at DividendData.com. If the software helps you identify just one slightly better stock, then it pays for itself. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more dividend investing content. Thanks for watching.